Is Bitcoin about to crash? With Bitcoin up over 70% year to date, everyone has once again become bullish. However, everything isn't butterflies and rainbows as we currently face multiple obstacles in order to break above $30,000. In today's video, I show you three bullish scenarios and three bearish scenarios that we can see play out very soon. So grab a cup of coffee or maybe something stronger and let's dive right in. First, let's look over the quarter one close. As you guys can see, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four since 2013 and you can see one two three four times it's had very very uh good quarters to start the year off we ended up the quarter up 70 percent for the first quarter and it's the third best start to the year since 2013 while i was looking at this then i also started thinking anytime that it's had this type of start how has bitcoin performed after that and and these are a couple of things that i found so a hundred percent of the time that bitcoin begins in the green it ends in the green overall for the year going back further in 2013 you can go back to like 2010 i think you can see charts from there since 2010 we've had a green start seven times six out of the seven times bitcoin's price ended the year even higher than the first quarter so the only time that it did not end the year higher was actually recently in 2021 so in 2021 was the only year in bitcoin's entire history where it didn't close the year higher than the first quarter every other time in its history we've closed higher than the first quarter the yearly average return for bitcoin has been 1408 percent if we go all the way back to 2012 again i don't like to go back that far because if we look at those numbers those numbers are look at this five thousand uh, percent five hundred percent like those numbers are insane i think at this point in time i only like to go back to 2017 for that type of history historical data that includes you know the average return of something how far how, how much it went up so if we just go back to 2017 then the average yearly return is 494 percent right so that's a little bit more realistic on what we might be able to get in 2023 not saying that we're going to go up 494 percent but just to give you an average one thing to note on all of these years two out of the four times right we got four years here from 2013 until now where the first quarter ended up green two times quarter two ended up red in 2013 we had a red quarter wasn't much but in 2021 we had a 40 percent pullback there so that was a pretty big pullback and again it's also situational if we think back to what was going on in 2021 towards quarter two i think during that time was uh, actually the china ban as well during that time uh tesla pulled bitcoin you couldn't buy teslas anymore with bitcoin so a lot of things were going on throughout that time but just to give you guys an idea you know without getting into too many details giving giving it an overview twice so it's 50 percent of the time we've retraced or we've pulled back or we've ended up in red in quarter two from the run-up in quarter one so now i'm gonna first pull up the weekly chart here to look at where the resistance is currently and where the support is currently right off the bat we can see the resistance clearly right this is we're currently at a resistance zone here and if we go back in history we can see that this was clearly a support back here in may of last year if we continue back we can see in 2021 again it was a support if we go back further to 2020 we can see again a support so what happens to support when it's broken it becomes a resistance and because it was such a strong support that means that it's also going to be a pretty strong resistance so we're gonna need more than just a little bit of hype in order to break through this we're gonna need some sort of some more momentum we're gonna need a, a catalyst to really get through this level once we get through this level though I think that we can run up possibly to this next level up here which is around that thirty seven thirty eight thousand dollar area but for right now that's gonna be a major resistance that we're gonna be fighting here you can see we've been here for three weeks weeks already as far as the supports go we have a support sitting around that $25,000 area of course 25,000 a big even number right psychological support level that's played as a resistance and support various times if you look back another support right here sitting around the $22,000 area this is a support that we we're at previously earlier in February and then further back from that we have $20,000 another big psychological number it's a previous all 
all-time high. So of course, it's gonna be a support. There's a lot of buying and selling going on there. Plus, it's close to a Fibonacci retracement level there. So a lot of things going on there. And one more thing that I wanted to show you guys at that $20,000 level, we have a CME gap at $20,000. If you guys remember, earlier this year, in January, we had this CME gap here. And, you know, everybody was talking about whether or not it was going to get closed or not. And it went on for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks without it being closed. On the eighth week though, guess what happened? That gap did get closed. And then we had a run all the way back up to where we're currently at right now, basically. So we have another CME gap and it's sitting right around the same exact area as the last one, which is right around 20 thousand dollars however we also have a cme gap to the upside you can make arguments on both of these right because there's a cme gap here at thirty six thousand dollars and the interesting thing about this cme gap at thirty six thousand if again we pull up the chart here where is this next level at once we break above this resistance right here this is sitting basically at thirty six thousand dollars right that's exactly where that cme gap is another thing that kind of gives that scenario some confluence if we pull up this head and shoulders pattern, there's an inverse head and shoulders patterns. I've, I've been talking about this for the last week or two. You can see the left shoulder, you can see the head, you can see the right shoulder, and then the breakout, right? This is the breakout area right here. So the way that you measure the target for a breakout is you measure the bottom of the head to the shoulders where the break is, right? So you can see that this shoulder is aligned with this shoulder. So when we broke above that, you can see that we got a big candle up. If you measure from the bottom of the head to the break, here that gives us our target which it happens to also be thirty six thousand dollars now we have multiple different scenarios that are pointing at the same price point of thirty six thousand dollars which is why i like to look at all these different things in the daily time frame because it's more immediate you can see our price action here and you, this right here is the rsi this is basically momentum right so you can see as the price was going up he here the momentum was also going up but what's happened is as the price has continued to go up momentum has dropped off this is a bearish divergence what usually happens in this scenario when when the price is going up the momentum is falling down that usually leads to a short-term pullback you know once we pair that up with we're sitting at a strong resistance that shows me that there is that possibility where we might see some sort of short-term pullback in the near future and that pullback could be, you know, back down to 25,000, which is the first support, could possibly be back to 22,000, or it might be to 20,000 where that CME gap is. There's no way to know exactly how far that pullback could be. And there's, again, there's no way to know if that pullback will even happen, but that's just what the charts is, are currently showing me right now. We have a bearish divergence that usually means a pullback. We're also at a big resistance that usually means a pullback. Those are the two different things that I'm looking at as far as from the different scenarios. To end it on the bullish note, on the weekly time frame, we are seeing higher highs and higher lows for the first time since back in 2021 when we made our run to uh, previous all-time highs. And again, this is a weekly time frame, so this is on a longer time scale. I think as, as the year progresses and plays out, we could continue to see these higher highs, which could lead to our target of $36,000 dollars which is the next main target here now as far as how i'm playing it this week i'm shorting right now i am short at resistance just go with what the price is saying if there's resistance there don't fight it i'm grabbing short positions here in the red then as price goes down i take a little bit of profit when when it goes back up into into the resistance again open up short and i'm gonna keep doing this until we break thirty thousand dollars because once we flip 30k i think um it's only a matter of time before we see 36 to 38 thousand with everything currently going on in the market, a lot of things are going under the radar right now. Last week, I covered one of the biggest events happening this year in August, the Litecoin halving. Did you know that during Litecoin's first halving event in 2015, it went over 37,000%? And in 2019, during the second halving event, it went over 1,800%, both times hitting new all-time highs. History doesn't always repeat, but it often does rhyme. Litecoin is currently up over 130% from the bottom with more room to go up. So make sure to check out the in-depth analysis on how you can profit from the Litecoin halving this year by watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos just like this.